Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Apex Town Council. This is the meeting for June 19th, 2018. At this time, I'd like to turn the, the time over to Councilman Moyer for our invocation. Yeah, thank you. Please, uh, uh, Laura, thank you for today. Thank you for this time together where we can uh, get together and do the town's business. I just pray for uh, understanding today from everybody in the room and, and up here making these decisions in the best interest of those in Apex. I thank you for all the freedoms that we have in this amazing country that you bless us with. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight. Uh, you may notice that... Um, it is summertime now, so we have put the jackets aside. So if you'd like to make yourself more comfortable and take your jacket off, please feel free to do so. Um, we have, we have uh, put aside the formalities of it in order to get through the summer comfort, um, which is also why our shades are drawn already, um, just to keep the heat out and the uh, cool in. So I hope everybody feels comfortable tonight. Uh, as well, um, for our regular updates uh, we have yellow sheets over here for public forum and public hearings. If you intend to speak at either, you need to find the appropriate sheet and put your name on it right now, uh, as well as get yourself a copy of the um, public speaking policy. This is out on the podium, and if you missed it, feel free to go get one. Uh, the town clerk will be giving me those in just a few minutes, so please don't delay. Uh, lastly, the agenda is out there, so if you missed it, please go get that so you can follow along. Uh, with that, now we move to the time of pre uh, presentations, and uh, there is a proclamation I have here. Uh, whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the town of Apex, North Carolina, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, and whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of business, and crime reduction, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, provide or prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air that we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development and produce habitat for wildlife, and whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecology and, and the beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas the town of Apex recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources, and whereas the town of Apex will be sponsoring numerous events during the month of July to encourage citizens to enjoy all the benefits of our public parks and greenways and the benefits that they offer. Now, therefore, be it resolved at the Apex Town Council that July is recognized as Parks and Recreation Month in the town of Apex, and all citizens are hereby encouraged to enjoy a lifetime of discovery through public parks and recreation. And is our director here tonight? I thought I saw him. Does he want to come up and take? I think a couple members of his team are here. Oh, great. To accept that proclamation. Great. All right, let's do that. I'll come down. Mayor, members of the council, this is um, Patrick Fitzsimmons and Allie Pulaski on our team, and they have been instrumental in um, putting together all the events that you see on the calendar for July. And uh, so I wanted them to accept this on behalf of the department. Okay, great. One more.
<clears throat> With that, we now move into consent agenda. Consent agenda are items that are considered to be routine and typically enacted by a single vote. Uh, any council member, if they choose, can pull something for later discussion, but typically that doesn't happen unless there's something that uh, needs discussion. So at this time, I'll ask, is there something to be removed or is there a motion to approve? Mr. Add -on. Oh, and there, okay, thank you for the clarification. Uh, please note, council members, there is one add-on item for the cemetery budget amendment 2018-27 for the cemetery fund. And that, I would include that in the motion as well. Is there a motion? So moved. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor of uh, approval of the consent agenda with the add-on item, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, the consent agenda is approved. We now move to a time of uh, setting the regular meeting agenda. And this is uh, where we review the agenda tonight to see uh, what we might want to conduct. There is a pre-printed agenda. It's my understanding that there's one item that <coughs> has been requested for continuance. Is that correct? or Because if, if so, we can move that to the top of our um, public hearings. Public hearing three and four. All right. So my re uh, recommendation would be that public hearings three and four be moved to the top of the public hearings, and we'll handle that before number one. Any other changes from council members, or is there a motion? Motion to approve with I'll changes. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve with changes. Discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say <coughs> no. All right, we have set our agenda, and public hearings three and four will be handled at the top of the public hearing list. <coughs> at this time, we'll now go to public forum. This is a time for the public to speak to your elected representatives. Um, we have a three-minute timer up here for anyone who wishes to speak. If your name is already on the public forum sheet that the clerk will be bringing me shortly, uh, then I will call your name and feel free to come up, speak your name and address, and uh, we will listen for three minutes. Thank you. All right, I'm looking here. I see one person has signed up, so at this time I'll call, and I'll apologize. Is it Merrill Devaney? Okay, Merrill Devaney. Hi, my name is Meryl Devaney. I live at 1606 Squaw Walden Lane in Apex. And um, I was attending a couple of your meetings, and I saw that the new budget was here, and the reserve we have, I heard, was $1.4 million for the town. And um, this number is 1% of the proposed budget for next um, year. And um, that is quite small. I mean, it's great that the town is not bankrupt and we have a reserve, but it is in <coughs> comparison to the budget, it's quite small and it's not really common for most like nonprofit organizations or other businesses, they keep 5% in reserve. So I thought it might be ideal if we could see to include more money in the reserve in the future. All right, thank you. Um, and at this time I'll close the public forum, uh, having had the last speaker. Um, Mr. Town Manager, though, or maybe Assistant Town Manager, I'll let either of you duke it out however you want to. But I think, would you like to address that one, just from a factual standpoint? Sure. Our, um, our fund balance is in the 40, 42% range. Um, and actually, if, if you'd like to get, um, maybe Mr. Purvis will give you his contact information. He can uh, talk to you about that. A little bit. That, that's a that one point. Give me the number again. One point four million. One point four. Is that in the budget to go to? Probably fund coming balance. out of fund balance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so yeah, Mr. Purvis would be happy to sit and um, appreciate your interest in, in our yes. budget. But and it is. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have yes. we do have we have we a have a large reserve. reserves. And, and Mr. Haven, there are yes. there are laws that require a certain percent in reserve, right? Correct. Uh, well, it's not not really a law, but guidance from the local government yeah. commission says that uh, cities uh, need to have at least uh, a fund balance, unreserved fund balance, or undesignated fund balance of eight percent. Um, this council has an adopted policy to maintain a fund balance of twenty five percent. So we are even in excess of that, and that's just. It's just prudent um, financial management. But Mr. Purvis would be happy to, to walk you through. He's the budget guru here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your comment, though. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mira. <coughs> All right, this time we'll um, 
move into public hearings and uh, as promised um, we'll handle public hearings number three and four at the top. Uh, before we get to that, uh, let me just ask uh, Miss Mayo, I see, is named for this. Do you, do, have you already been contacted about a continuance then? I have, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Do we want, do, well, do you want to make the recommendation for us just so we hear it formally on the record? All right. Thank you. I'd hate for us to do it until we hear formally that it's been requested. Right now it's a rumor. The applicant's actually here in the room as well, um, but I was contacted today by the applicant and they requested that we continue the public hearing until the August 7th meeting. All right. Um, and All right. staff recommends that. All right, thank you. Let me, um, and I, I assume, Mr. Barron, um, is that acceptable? Is that your request? All right, very good. Thank you very much. Um, with, uh, with that, I'll ask the council if there is a motion to continue public hearings number three and four to the regular scheduled meeting August the 7th. I'll make a motion to continue the items. Second. All right, we have motion and second to continue this to August 7th. Discussion? Not hearing any, I'll call for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, that motion passes. We'll continue that to August 7th. All right, that. That moves us now to public hearing number one. This is uh, public hearing and possible rezoning for 18 CZ 13 cool pools. And Lauren Stoudemire is presenting. Good afternoon. This is rezoning case 18 ZZ 13 for cool pools. The property to be rezoned is generally located by Hume Olive Road and Old US 1 Highway. The high school and future middle school are located in this general direction and to the west is Cool Pools and to the east is Vicious Fishes. The 2030 land use map identifies the proposed site as office employment and commercial services. The property is currently zoned rural residential and the adjacent, and the adjacent property to the east is, is neighborhood business. To the south and west is Textflex conditional zoning and to the north is rural residential. The applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on March 13, 2018 and a copy of the neighborhood report is in your packet. This proposed zoning is consistent with the adjacent property and is being rezoned to give additional property to the south and west to help bring the property into compliance with the town of Apex Unified Development Ordinance. This piece of land was not included in the original Cool Pools 2015 rezoning. The proposed rezoning will allow the parcel to be compatible with the existing zoning to the south and west parcel. A full list of the proposed uses and zoning conditions are included on page two of the staff report. The permitted and the first six conditions in your staff report are consistent with the existing conditions of the TexFlex conditional zoning to the south and west parcel. The new rezoning condition number seven reads, after rezoning of the property, the lot will be recombined with one of the surrounding properties to the east or west of the site. Planning staff can recommend approval of conditions proposed by the applicant. The planning board reviewed this item on their uh, June 11th meeting and unanimously recommend approval of the rezoning as proposed by the applicant. I'll be here to answer any questions as well as the applicant in the audience. All right, thank you. Are there any questions of Ms. Dottermeyer? None? All right, thank you very much. And the uh, applicant is here? Yes. All right. Mr. Applicant, or representation thereof. Representation, Jeff Roach, Peak Engineering and Design. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just want to let you guys know I was actually going for the smallest rezoning this year, but I think I got beat out by the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So I'm really just here to answer any questions. It was really missed when Cool Pools rezoned the TechFlex site about two years ago. So it's just cleaning up. Um, there's electrical boxes and everything on the site. So I'm really just here just to kind of blend it into the site next door. So any questions you have for me, I'll be happy to answer them. All right. Thank you, Mr. Roach. Any questions for Mr. Roach? Was that a separate piece of property? Did that not belong to one of those two parcels? Correct. It's, it actually wraps around. Um, this piece has it. Uh, it's, it was kind of an Orvman piece that was done years and years ago. Um, I don't know why it was left. I don't know why it was missed when they zoned it originally. I wasn't involved two years ago. 
Um, and as we started working on the site next door, it, it just came up and we started working with staff to get it rezoned. So, right. yeah, I, Mr. Moore, I had the same question when I saw it too. No idea. All right, thank you. Um, I'll open the public hearing now and uh, recognizing that the only person who signed up was Mr. Roach, I'll, con I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and we'll refer the matter back to council for a mo uh, possible motion. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> this, is a, this is a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Toughest one you might face all summer. It may be, yeah. All right. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Roach. Uh, this time we move to public hearing number two. This is a possible motion in re on the rezoning application 18CZ09. And uh, presenting today is Ms. Sarah Rayfield. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I will be presenting rezoning case 18CZ09, located at 8209 and 8233 Green Level Church Road. First, let me orient you to the site. Um, this here um, is the um, property um, in the petition. Here we have the high school. We have the Regency at White Oak here to the south. Um, over approximately in this location is a future trailhead for the town of Cary, anticipated to be constructed this fall, um, and that will connect to the greenway here over on the other side. Uh, we have the intersection with Roberts Road um, over here to the southeast of the site. The current zoning is rural residential. The requested zoning is low density conditional zoning. Uh, the site um, is 34.63 <laughs> acres. Um, again, the requested zoning is LD uh, with conditions. Um, we have low density zoning over here to the south, rural residential to the north. Um, we have a B1 classification over here along Roberts Road, um, and then these parcels here to the east are also currently zoned rural residential. The properties are currently vacant and wooded. The applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on December 6, 2017. That packet um, is in your report. The 2030 land use map identifies this um, property um, as low density residential, therefore the requested rezoning is consistent with the 2030 land use map. Um, and you were given a copy of the proposed zoning conditions in your staff report, however, um, of about a couple hours ago we received another zoning condition, so therefore um, that is the um, piece of paper that I put uh, on your desk when I got here and the only new condition is going to be number 18. I'm going to go over the zoning conditions next but just wanted to let you know that the only new one from your report is number 18. So most of the proposed zoning conditions are consistent with our architectural standards for residential development um, and I'm going to read those that are not the standard that we normally receive and I'll be happy to answer questions about those uh, when I finish. So um, of that list, number one through eight are going to be the new ones. Number one, primary access, sorry, and I should say not new to tonight, but just um, new outside of the typical architectural conditions that we get. Primary access to the property shall be via an extension of Roberts Road to create a fourth leg of the intersection of Roberts Road and Green Level Church Road. And just to orient you here, essentially what we're looking at is extending Roberts Road into the site here, um, and it will just be um, into the site, not um, a complete extension. Roberts Road is not on our thoroughfare plan. This will be a residential cross section. Um, and to let you know, um, when this rezoning came to us, you were supposed to hear it last month, it was asked to be continued by the applicant. And it was because the applicant has been in conversations um, with folks looking at this piece, and that is where this zoning condition comes from. So this is something that the applicant and um, folks looking here at this piece have worked out. So this will essentially give access to this development here, um, as well as future development located over here. Um, and that does not take away from the stub outs that are currently here where we would be seeking condition 
or seeking connectivity rather when this comes back for a master subdivision plan. Um, number two, it's a zoning for adjacent property identified by PIN 0723869543, and that's this piece here, is residential at the time of site or subdivision plan approval for the rezoned lands. A stub street will be constructed to provide future access to <coughs> PIN 0723869543. Um, and that is because of concerns with access along Green Level Church Road, um, with the high school being located here, uh, the intersection here, there's already a, a lot of traffic on here, and so essentially what we're looking at doing is not having access points as potentially on Green Level Church Road and essentially having that access be through Roberts Road. And so that will give the site internal access. And in regard to number two, depending on how this site were to redevelop, number two allows, if this is to develop residentially, then essentially that stub out to this piece will come from here, which would be what we would look for in subdivision um, plan, is to provide that connectivity as required by the UDO. Number three, development shall include public right-of-way dedication along Green Level Church Road based on a minimum 50 feet from roadway center line. Number four, no construction traffic will be permitted through Regency at White Oak Development. Number five, the minimum lot width at building setback line shall be 100 feet. Number six, the minimum lot size shall be 13,000 square feet in size. Number seven, the average lot size shall be 16,500 square feet in size. Number eight, the maximum density for the growth site shall be 1.2 dwelling units per acre. I'm going to skip down to uh, the other ones here. Uh, number 16, all units shall include conduit for future installation of solar power generating equipment and associated wiring. Number 17, development will comply with the bicycle, pedestrian, and equestrian plan recommendations of the comprehensive transportation plan in effect at the time of site or subdivision plan approval as provided for in the Unified Development Ordinance. Number 18, and this is the new one as of tonight, a minimum of three houses shall be constructed so as to include installation of solar panels and power system of at least four kilowatt capacity per house. The lots on which these houses are to be built shall be identified on the final plat. Approval of this rezoning is reasonable because the property, because the proposed low density residential conditional zoning district is consistent with the low density residential land use classification on the 2030 land use map. Proposed rezoning is reasonable and in the public interest because it will allow residential uses to develop consistent with existing residential development in the area. The proposed rezoning will also maintain the character and appearance of the area and provide flexibility to accommodate the growth and population economy and infrastructure consistent with that contemplated by the 2030 land use map. Um, staff recommends approval um, and also um, planning board um, heard this item at their June 11th meeting and also recommended approval. I will be happy to answer any questions for you at this time. The applicant is also in the audience. Should you have any questions for him? Thank you. Questions <coughs> for Ms. Rayfield? It, is there a stoplight currently at Roberts Road and Green Level Church? Yes. There is. Okay. Um, when you, when it, the number 17, the com complying with that, uh -huh. what does that look like? What does that mean in this case? So because um, we're in the process of going through Advance Apex <coughs> and included in that is the bike plan and the updates to that. So essentially what this is um, allowing is, or looking out for rather, is if there's any recommendations that we see coming out of the bike plan, then th that those could be then incorporated into this project if it were to apply. Okay. So yeah. just because we're in that updating process time as recommendations, you know, as things are starting to um, develop out of there. It okay. Um, I had another one. So uh, I had a couple more, actually. Um, the one about the, the, the 50 feet, are, are they going to be required to build sidewalks, or is it just a, um, a right-of-way dedication for the um, Well, that's, allow, that's to allow for any turn lanes that may be necessary. Um, but, yes, sidewalk would be required. It, it does not change the current requirement that sidewalk is required along street frontage um, for residential development. Um, just an FYI from um, my concern going into, you know, if this passes for master site plan is going to be, we got to going to have a lot of kids walking from here to across to the school. Sure. So, you know, making it as safe as possible. 
Uh, staff has met with the town of Cary as well as the school system in regards to um, development occurring in this area. And so some of these zoning conditions are essentially out of those um, because we have met and that was, you know, those were some of the things we were able to work on with the applicant regarding this site <coughs> as well as um, future development, future rezoning we anticipate um, coming in this area. So staff is aware of those and has expressed those as well. So would a Roberts Road extension, would there be a, a crosswalk or a, even a signal crosswalk at that place? Um, there will be a crosswalk. I imagine it would be signalized as well. We would get, yeah, yes. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Let me thank see you. if the uh, applicant wishes to speak. Does the applicant wish to make a presentation of any kind? Come forward and identify yourself for us. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council. My name is Tony Tate. Uh, 5011 South Park Drive in Durham. I'm a landscape architect and land planner uh, here assisting Mr. Future with this rezoning request. And uh, thank you, Sarah, for uh, an excellent presentation. Uh, this particular piece of property just seems like a, a natural extension of a um, piece of property to the south. There's um, street stubs already set up um, to go directly into this. Uh, we worked quite a bit with staff um, and transportation trying to figure out how to um, not have another connection to Green Level Church Road and to work out the, the, the communications with the property owner to get Roberts Road to extend in and, and make that uh, more comfortable for staff uh, as far as access to Green Level Church Road. Um, we've had other conversations and so we've got um, a quite an extensive list of conditions that we've offered. Um, we, we really like those there. They're larger lots, uh, they're 100 feet wide at the building set back. We're hoping to save um, quite a lot of trees on a lot that size. And so um, we've also offered other condition for the, uh, for the solar. And so we, uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, this project in, in Apex and here to answer any question that you might have. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Tate. Um, before you step away, let me see if any uh, council members have a question for you before we go to public hearing. Yeah, I had a question. Um, so the, the property across from Roberts Road, um, you wouldn't have put that, this as a condition here if there was some, some kind of agreement that that was for sure going to be an entrance to the neighborhood, right? We, we've been working a lot with that um, property owner and, and buyer for that piece of property. So yes, that's that's going to happen to make that work. Okay, and it won't, be like, it won't be like years and years after the rest of the development is built, right? No, because we, we've committed to the neighbors that we won't have any construction traffic entering through their project so you know we we need that entrance um, there to have, provide access to the property so it's it's crucial so okay. we've been in long discussions with them about making that happen okay thanks any others thank you all right thank you mr tate at this time i'd like to open the public mm -hmm. hearing and i see uh, besides mr tate uh, mr futrell signed up did you want to say something mr futrell Land View Trail, uh, 150 Tower View Court, Cary. Uh, just want to say it's been my pleasure to work with my neighbors on this uh, rezoning application. We've had numerous meetings and discussions, and I've actually had three different meetings with the folks at uh, Regency at White Oak, and that's been a very, very healthy process. And uh, I actually had some at the uh, planning board meeting last week and as you all know this is the time of the year when everybody's traveling and they couldn't be here tonight but they wanted to be and I think some of them may have sent you an email but uh, they are very supportive of my project and I am working with the buyer of the property that gets us to Roberts Road which we have worked with the staff on that. Russell Dalton has been very helpful in that regard. And we will be putting a crosswalk in that gets the residents from this neighborhood over to the school. And there will be additional uh, traffic signal improvements to be put in. And you'll be hearing more about that when we come in with our subdivision plan. All right. Thank you, Mr. Petro. Thanks. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and refer the matter back to council for uh, discussion leading to a possible motion. Did you want to make a motion? 
No. <laughs> okay, but comment. Yeah, if you comment. All right. So, um, for me, at this time, I'm not comfortable with um, this project in this location, and it is um, nothing to do with your project, um, but it's everything to do with the time that it's taken for us to see some of the safety issues that we have raised um, much too often with different entities that are sort of out of our hands. Um, and so until I see um, those things um, for the schools that we already have, especially for the older <coughs> children, um, I'm not going to be able to support this in that location at this time. Um, if this goes, I'll do whatever I need to do to make sure that the walkers especially are safe, but that's where I am right now. I'm trying to deal with the safety issues for um, the older children at high schools. I, I guess I'm on the other flip side of that record. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about this. I'm not usually enthusiastic about residential development, but um, the average lot size is over a third of an acre on this, and we've been trying to get more upscale quality developments. And, and uh, Mr. Futuro has brought us one that I think is, is really <coughs> quite good, um, especially trying to save all the trees. I, we've, I mean, you just look at the one to the south, and what's happened there, it's a moonscape. And I think that the quality of this development is going to raise that development. I can understand why those neighbors are so happy to have something like this come in next door. I would be. So, um, I, and I, th I think there's been efforts to, I understand your concern, certainly, but I think there's been efforts, especially with the crosswalk. I'm not sure how much you can uh, do to ensure safety when the children have to really understand through their parents and stuff to look both ways and things like that. So I think that's the personal side of it too that needs to always come into play on uh, on safety. So uh, I, I, I th I've talked uh, with the developer and and, and with Mr. Tate and and uh, I just think that they have bent over backwards to try to make this a really quality development. Rarely do I say things like that. <laughs> it is nice to see, I would second that, it is nice to see the larger lots in this area. I think it'll do, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm excited to see this, for sure. <laughs> Thank you for all your concessions and conditions that you've added as well. And, and I would add, that it sounds like it was a good process with the neighbors, which is, um, we haven't always seen that, even in my time here, not always been the case, so that, that's, that's nice. And um, I, I will be looking for kind of safety, pedestrian safety regarding this, because I think in the uh, site plan, because it's an important thing to um, make sure these kids can walk and can be safe. Hang on a second. Uh, I want to, we're discussing up here, but um, if there's a specific question, then maybe we'll go that route. But I'd rather just keep conducted business. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that there are things maybe we can talk after about um, the, the signalized crossings and these things that are going to be very visible and very clear to the drivers and the walkers is going to be an important part of, uh, I think, uh, what I'm going to be looking for after right. that. And I'm, I'm fine. I don't know. No, nope, yep. Okay, we can I understand. talk to it. Okay. Um, did you want to add any comment before we get to a motion? Um, my biggest comment is going to be just safety. I mean, we've got this school here we've got you know we, we definitely know that um, kids are going to be walking across the road not necessarily going down to the crosswalk to do so so I'm, uh, I'm pretty concerned about that um, the other thing is there um, I mean there's a big piece of property that's not going to be part of this in the middle so I'm assuming that the sidewalk is not going to be continuous along that area for quite a while so that's my assumption here. So I think on that note, we'll rely on staff at the site plan development to ensure those type of things. I think they've heard those comments. Um, at this time, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. All right. We got a motion and a second to approve with the conditions that were put on the uh, most recent list, 18 in number. All right. Um, is there uh, any discussion on that motion to approve? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. All opposed say no. No. All right. That motion passes by uh, four to one. And we now move to public hearing number five. Mr. Futurell, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think if we got all the answers we needed, we'd just keep on going, okay? Uh, public hearing number five, this is a possible rezoning for uh, about two acres on Lufkin Road. And, uh, oh, Mr. Futrell, his name is on here. Uh, Amanda Bunce is presenting. Good evening. Okay, this is rezoning 18 CZ16. Uh, these two parcels are about 2.1 acres, and uh, they are landlocked, but they do have a private access through lots to the north up to Lufkin Road. Uh, the 2030 Laney's map designates these two properties as industrial employment. The current zoning is residential agriculture, and as you can see, these are pretty much the two last parcels in this area um, to be developed in, as, in a non-residential manner. Um, the proposed zoning of this property is tech, tech flex conditional zoning. Uh, the applicant conducted their neighborhood meeting on March 27th, and you have that report. Uh, the conditions that are proposed for um, this rezoning are identical to those that exist in the Pinnacle Park Center uh, development to the east. Um, and there's a long list of, of uses um, from office and manufacturing, uh, medical, and uh, basically there's like 67 proposed uses, uh, but they are identical uh, as well as the architectural standards to those um, in the Pinnacle Park Center subdivision, which is accessed off of Classic Road. Um, planning staff uh, is recommending approval of this rezoning, and the planning board heard this item at their June 11th uh, meeting and unanimously recommended approval. Um, this rezoning is uh, reasonable in that it's consistent with the industrial employment classification on the 2030 land use map, and it's in the public interest because it will allow for a greater area that can be developed with non-residential uses, consistent with the surrounding properties, especially those to the east. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you. Questions? With it landlocked, you said where is the access going to be from? Well, the current access is through a property to the north up to Lufkin Road. Uh, the intent of the developer is to recombine these parcels with the um, and, and, and join it into the subdivision to the east. You will eventually see a revised uh, subdivision plan for that um, incorporation. <coughs> so it will presumably no longer be landlocked once it's combined. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Mm -hmm. Any others? Thank you, Ms. Bunce. Uh, this time I uh, look at public hearing number five. Mr. Tate, do you wish to uh, present? Thank you again, Tony Tate, 5011 South Park Drive in Durham. Um, this particular request is for um, some residents that were basically not holdouts but wanted to remain on their property for as long as they could. And so at this point, um, <coughs> They're selling their property, and again, those lots will be added into the, the recombined with the lot in the subdivision. It carries all the same zoning um, conditions, so it's just being folded into that uh, existing development there. So um, nothing too um, out of the ordinary about it, I don't think. So I'd be happy to answer questions that seems to be uh, following along with the, with the pattern there. So. All right. Any questions for Mr. Tate? <coughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Tate. At this time, I'll open the public hearing, and uh, I see Mr. Futrell has signed up. Do you wish to speak? No. no. You don't have to if you don't want to. We're recombining it with the lot that it touches. To the, the subdivision. Okay. Six. All right. Very yeah, good. about safety on Green Level Church Road, if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance. No, it, it's a <laughs> joke. That was a joke. You can ignore <laughs> that. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I had, I've had two meetings with DOT. I wanted to address Ms. Dozier's concerns because I have the same concern. Yeah. I've had two meetings with the EOT the most recent last Wednesday to discuss crosswalks, the signal improvements and all that. I wanted the town board to know that I'm two steps ahead of you. Appreciate you doing that. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. All right, at this point I'll get close up, I'll close the public hearing. <laughs> Refer the matter back to council for a discussion leading to a possible motion. Motion to approve. Second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion on the motion to approve? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, the motion carries unanimously. And that leads us to public hearing number six. Thank you, Mr. Tate, Mr. Futrell. Public hearing number six is uh, possible amendments to the UDO regarding a public safety communications tower. Amanda Bunce. Okay. So this is a um, simple amendment. Uh, as you may recall, we recently added public safety communication tower as a use uh, in the UDO that has to be approved um, uh, with a special use permit by the town council. And uh, Wake County, in looking at a public safety communication tower and um, improvements that are needed, realize they have a tower that's over 400 feet, which was the height that was approved in that amendment. So uh, they filed a, uh, a text amendment request to increase that height to 500 feet, which should accommodate um, the towers in our jurisdiction. And again, it's still um, the approval of any such tower will be subject to special use permit review by you. And uh, Planning Board recommended approval of this at their meeting unanimously. All right, thank you, Ms. Bunce. Questions for Ms. Bunce? So they asked for 400 feet and then realized their design was more than 400 feet? Is that what you said? We worked with Wake County on the initial amendment, yes, and we wrote it at 400 feet and then realized um, that there was a tower that is in our, in our jurisdiction that was over um, 400 feet. All right, thank you, Amanda. And this time I'll open the public hearing. I see I have, looks like six people have signed up, so I'll call you. Um, it's optional. If you don't want to come, that's fine. Mr. Wyatt Booth, followed by John Higgins and Christopher Bostian. Uh, please start by sta stating your name and uh, address for the record and watch the lights there. You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. I'm Wyatt Booth of the law firm of Williams Mullen here on behalf of the county. The rest of the crowd on the sign-in sheet are either with the county or with Motorola or with Tower Engineering if you had any technical or engineering questions about towers in Wake County. But the, uh, the short version is Wake County has a number of public safety and emergency towers throughout the county. They vary from 400 to 500 feet. When this came before you before with the 400-foot limit, it was simply an oversight to not have the height limit be 500 to match up with the other towers in the county. Um, how these towers work, it's line of sight when topography dictates height. Um, the towers communicate with each other by microwave. So you know, if you've got, depending on the height that you need to reach the next tower, sometimes it's 480, sometimes it's 440, but uh, the spread is 400 to 500 throughout the county. And we're here to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you, Mr. Booth. Thank you. Um, Mr. Higgins, does Mr. Does anybody else need to speak, or we're just here for questions? Yeah, unless you have questions. All right, all right. So, from a technical perspective, um, with that, um, I'll officially I'll close the public hearing, but I'll refer the matter back to council for discussion. And if there is a technical question that we need, maybe we can ask that of them. Um, but I think it's pretty clear. Um, let me just ask: Is there is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval. Oh, yeah. For approval, yeah, just for to be approval, clear. I'm sorry, for approval. <laughs> All right. <laughs> questions, <laughs> questions, yeah. questions on the uh, motion for approval discussion? All right. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right. That passes unanimously. Thank you all for coming out. That takes us to public hearing number seven. This is also UDO uh, ordinance change, possibly. Uh, Amanda Bunce. Okay. There are four amendments here, and as usual, I'll pause after each one so that you can ask questions um, of, uh, as we go through the amendments. Um, the first, this seems like a very long set of amendments, but trust me, we can summarize this, and it's not as painful as it looks. <laughs> the first amendment is to um, the UDO, various sections of the UDO to address the process for the review and approval of minor subdivisions. Um, if you recall recently, um, the definition of minor subdivision was amended so that if there was an extension of water or sewer services, um, a minor subdivision could still be reviewed by staff and would not trigger a council review. Minor subdivisions are four lots or less that do not have to dedicate road right of way. Um, so 
that puts that in perspective. So what we then realize is there is a whole process, the section in the UDO that addressed minor subdivisions basically sent it straight to a final plat, which we need to be able to see a set of plans to address buffer requirements, um, utility extensions when necessary. And so basically all of these amendments essentially um, incorporate a process for minor subdivisions that are similar to the master subdivision process you're familiar with, except that minor subdivisions are approved by staff as they are small and relatively simple in nature. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll ask if there are any questions. Questions on amendment number one? <coughs> Okay. Proceed. All right. The next amendment is uh, to the sign section for um, two different sign types, uh, principal ground sign for non-residential uses and uh, signs for construction development sites. Um, and what we've realized is that there, the UDO for these two sign types basically does not readily allow a sign on a property when the property only has um, limited access, such as right in, right out only. Quick, quick question. Do you have a slide for that? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Ah, okay. I do not have the, the text in Strike to Render line that you'll have to rely on your, your staff report for that. Um, so for the non-residential uh, sign, we've proposed uh, language that allows the one principal ground sign near a limited service vehicular entrance when that is the only point of entrance. Um, essentially, we're ensuring that a business can have a uh, principal ground sign, uh, regardless of the type of access that they have. Um, and then for the, uh, oh, the same applies for when there's a multiple or mixed use development for non-residential. Um, and in that sign type, we are also um, deleting a content related standard. As you know, um, to protect First Amendment, we cannot have any content related standards in the UDO. So um, there's a, a standard um, that is being struck related to that. And then finally, for the construction development sign, it's pretty much a summary of those past two, allowing a sign at a limited service uh, vehicular access when there's no full service, full service access and striking any content related standards. Any questions on that amendment? Okay. Number three is related to uh, stormwater control measures. This was proposed by town staff in the Water, Res Water Resources Department. And it is related to, um, it's amending when the maintenance guarantee is due for stormwater control measures and when that guarantee can be released. Uh, currently, the guarantee is submitted prior to the approval of a final plat, and this um, changes, the proposed changes that it would fall at prior to final approval of the actual stormwater control measure. And then for the release of the guarantee, it changes from one year after 90% of COs are issued to one year after that stormwater control measure receives final approval. Any questions on that? And finally, number four, uh, number four is uh, amendments to Article 13, transportation development fees, uh, to rename that section and to remove uh, transportation development fee requirements and make corresponding formatting and section number amendments throughout that section. Um, as you know, the council has chosen to uh, no longer um, uh, to no longer collect transportation development fees, and so these are the necessary amendments that occur from that decision. Um, be happy to answer any questions you might have at that to the extent that I can. Okay. And the planning board rec unanimously recommended approval of all of these changes at their meeting on ju June 11th. Great, thank you. Um, since there were no questions along the way, I will now open the public hearing and see that no one has signed up, so I'll close the public hearing and refer the matter back to council for a possible motion. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. That concludes our public hearings. There is no old business or unfinished business. We now move to new business number one. Shelley Mayo will present the Castleberry Trails Master Subdivision Plan. Uh, off of Wimberley Road. I got there faster than you thought. I did. You guys are on roll tonight. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep that up. Rio. <laughs>
right. Um, as the mayor stated, this is like this is Castleberry Trails. It's located off of Wimberley. If you go to the north right here, just to kind of give you an idea of where we are, this is Green Level West Road. So this is kind of almost at the northernmost edge of our jurisdiction. Um, you recently approved a subdivision right here called the Point at Lake Castleberry. And then, of course, there is the um, lovely Lake Castleberry subdivision. You sense a theme going on here? Mm -hmm. um, that was approved a few years ago and is currently under construction. Um, here is the American Tobacco Trail. So this is going to bump right up against it. Um, and then if we go south, we get closer to town. Over on this side as well is the approved Weddington subdivision. Um, <coughs> this property, as shown, is currently set up under the 2030 land use map as low density residential. I'm sorry. I think that we might have the wrong land use map on here. It is zoned medium density residential. I apologize. It looks like the slide was an incorrect one. It is actually a medium density residential uh, land use map. So this is, and this is zoned medium density conditional zoning. Um, the property is 11.31 acres. With, a max, with 22 lots shown. Um, the density is 1.95 units per acre, and the maximum that was permitted under the approved rezoning was two units per acre. Um, the applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on October 24, 2017. That neighborhood meeting report is in your staff report. The site consists of, all, of four parcels totaling 11 acres. Um, as we've already discussed, it's adjacent to the American Tobacco Trail and south of the point at Lake Castleberry. On pages one, the bottom of page one and the top part of page two of your staff report, there are the approved zoning conditions for this project. Um, you're welcome to take a look at those and let me know if you have any questions. The applicant is proposing stage grading under the UDO's definition. The proposed project will connect to and extend existing public facilities. It does comply with the approved water system and wastewater system maps. There is no uh, FEMA designated 100 year floodplain, but it is located in the town of Apex primary watershed protection overlay district. As such, all town stormwater and drainage requirements are being met. Uh, the applicant is meeting all of the UDO buffer requirements with one exception. They're actually having to go a little above. Um, to the east, they're required to provide a 50-foot type A buffer along the American Tobacco Trail. There's actually a 50-foot sewer easement through here, and in order to uh, in order to meet the UDO's requirement, they're pro they're required to provide at least 10 feet of plantable area. So they're actually having to provide a 60-foot buffer all total in order to get that minimum planting area along through there. Um, this subdivision is actually and because it's under two units an acre, it's actually not required to provide any RCA under the UDO. Um, despite that, they are providing a little over an acre, which is a little over 9% of the project. Um, Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Advisory does not actually review single-family residential plans that have less than 30 acres or 30 units in the project. Because of that, there's always an automatic recommendation for fee and lieu for those smaller projects. The total amount of that fee in lieu is listed on page three of your staff report. Um, the proposed master subdivision plan is also consistent with the Apex Transportation Plan. Um, the project is proposing two vehicular accesses. One of those is a full movement access onto Wimberley Road. It lines up with Dorset Grove Road on the Lake Castleberry subdivision, so they're right across from each other. And then they're also providing a stub street to the north that will line up with a, sub, a similar stub street in, Lake, in the point at Lake Castleberry that goes to the <coughs> south. Uh, that way, in case this particular par parcel ever decides to redevelop, we can eliminate additional driveways out onto Wimberley, which as we all know is getting increasingly heavy traffic. And that way they can just extend that road and get all the driveways internal. Um, the following, there's also proposing two pedestrian connections. Um, they're connecting to the American Tobacco Trail through the point at Lake Castleberry to the north. And then they're also providing and building a stub um, greenway to the south that would allow these properties, if developed, to connect through and up to the ATT. 
Um, the proposed master plan meets the UDO as shown. Staff recommends approval, and when planning board heard this at their meeting last week, they unanimously recommended approval as well. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I think the applicant is also here. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Mayo? I do have um, yes, <clears throat> a question. So the RCA on, on tell me the requirements in our UDO of where we would require 0% RCA? These are only on, sub, on master subdivisions that have less than two dwelling units per acre. And this is at 1.95 dwelling units per acre. So that's the only situation that I'm aware of okay. where no RCA is required. Yeah, concept being the lots are big enough, you don't really need resource conservation. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a large lot. You're going to have lots of trees and other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they, they are also still required to provide those landscape buffers mm -hmm. that we require on all subdivisions. So they still have those perimeter buffers with the preserved trees and everything. It's just that they're not required to provide additional RCA because of what the mayor said. Right. Okay. I do appreciate them providing 9.1% of RCA and mm -hmm. I don't know, I, th I think that's important when you're building a neighborhood to try to conserve as much of it as you can in the natural landscape, right? We've, we've heard a lot about that. So um, just a statement, I guess maybe uh, staff can, can review and see if that's still applicable to, to what we see today coming through. We can definitely do that. Um, just to give you an idea, and I forgot to mention, point this <coughs> out earlier, there's actually a, a buffered stream down here and that's where a good portion of that RCA is from. Mm -hmm. So they're actually preserving that stream buffer down through there. No, they're, they're, they're not required to have a retention pond on this type of a development, but it looks like there's a pond there. Is that what that is? They are actually required to meet town. They uh, are. They do have to have a retention pond. Yes, sir. Uh, You're thinking of the uh, low density option that Mr. Whitehead added a few years ago. Yeah. There's actually additional requirements on top of that, including um, the type of road that they're allowed to install and the absolute maximum impervious surface they're allowed to do. I think if I remember correctly, that's a 12% maximum. So typically we, we see that on much larger lots, four and five acres, sometimes two and three, but typically much larger than this. And because otherwise you, you're restricting severely the amount of land that can ever be paved even for say, a right. garage extension. The okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Good. Sorry. Um, is, and staff is um, um, happy with the crosswalk being um, safe for pedestrians? Uh, and was, we are that wasn't really in the first plan when we were doing zoning. I didn't notice it, but it looks like there's it's highlighted in mm -hmm. or warning signs and everything. It's something. It's one of those things that we tend to flesh out more at the site plan and subdivision plan stage because we get better feedback and information as far as the grades and how much traffic is out on the road and everything. When we're at the rezoning stage, we have so many projects that get rezoned so far ahead of time, not in this particular case, but a lot of times we'll have them rezoned and they'll sit for five or six years, that it's difficult to really understand what the situation is going to be like when they actually get built. Um, in this particular situation, they are going to have a high visibility crosswalk through here and that should help um, improving safety and everything through that way. And that means that the thing is it's painted on the road and then there's... So instead of, of just having the two lines, which are a normal crosswalk, they actually have to paint um, several bars straight across. Yeah. And they're thicker bars than the two lines typically are. They're something like 6 to 12 inches wide. I don't remember exactly the detail. But seeing all of those thicker bars going across is much more visible to people. Um, I don't recall directly whether this one has the flashing lights, and unfortunately, Russell ha has already left. Well, it says crosswalk but warning signs, and then it has some W, whatever numbers. I don't know if that means Then that would be those, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just intended to give a little bit more warning to people coming up on it so they can see the crosswalk itself, but they also get the, hey, people are going to be in the road here in a minute. Okay. Okay. If there's no other discussion, is there a motion? Can you approve? All right. I'll second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Discussion on the motion? I think this is another good, yep. good subdivision for us. Yep. All right. With uh, no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Ms. Mayo. At this time, uh, we'll now look at the closed session item.
we have uh, a recommendation to um, go into closed session to consult with the attorney on the matter of HH Trinity Apex Investments LLC at all v town of Apex. Is there a motion to go into closed session? A motion. A second. All right. Any discussion on the motion? <laughs> all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, we're going into closed session. Let the public know that we have no other business to conduct in open session after the closed session. Thank you very much for coming tonight.